Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm sure you all saw the headlines. NASA made a tiny bit of a boo-boo back on July 21st when they maybe accidentally, unintentionally cut off contact with humanity's farthest flung spacecraft, which is sort of a NASA nightmare scenario, if I'm being honest. Not that we would lose contact necessarily, but that we would lose contact because of a mistake on our end. Not the spacecraft that's traveling 12 billion miles away from us. She's doing fine. We just accidentally hung up on her. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Buckle up, because I'm about to tell you the story of how we almost lost contact with the Voyager 2 spacecraft forever. So Voyager 2 and its sister ship Voyager 1 both launched in 1977, and their mission was quite Star Trek-y. That whole go where no man has gone before thing. Its original mission was the exploration of Jupiter and Saturn, and after making a string of discoveries there, such as active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io, and exploring the intricacies of Saturn's rings, the mission was extended. Voyager 2 went on to explore Uranus and Neptune, and is still the only spacecraft to have visited those outer planets. And as is famously known, these probes were carrying some very interesting cargo. In the late summer of 1977, two unmanned spacecraft, Voyager 1 and 2, lifted off from Cape Canaveral atop Titan Centaur rockets. Traveling uninterrupted through interstellar space, the Voyagers will endure forever, long after everything man has ever built has crumbled into dust. In the event the spacecraft encounter alien intelligence, both voyages carry a copper phonograph record, a message, celebrating the sights and sounds of Earth. And friendly wishes. These unique discs contain photographs of everyday life, as well as voices, offering greetings in 55 languages. There are also animal noises, the music of Beethoven and Chuck Berry, a baby crying, laughter, rain, and a heartbeat. All of the planets in Voyager's path were in perfect alignment, something that occurs only once every 176 years. The spacecraft were in position to visit all four of the outer planets, a grand slam. In 2012 and 2018, both probes left our solar system, traveling farther away than any probes had ever done. And in 2018, when Voyager 2 entered interstellar space, NASA made this adorable little video explaining how we know that Voyager 2 had left our solar system. We have ignition and we have liftoff of the Titan Centaur carrying the first of two Voyager spacecraft to extend man's senses farther into the solar system than ever before. They were launched in 1977. That's a long time ago. We say 41 years, but it's really two, two generations ago. You can think of what the technology was. Your smartphone has 200,000 times more memory than what the Voyager spacecraft have. And so it's just exciting that we've been able to get it into interstellar space. We launched two Voyager spacecraft. They were basically the same, but they were on different paths. Voyager 2 was the one that was chosen to do the grand tour, that is to fly by Jupiter, and then Saturn, and then Uranus, and then Neptune. And then after 1989, we began what is now called the Voyager Interstellar Mission. We were on a path we hoped to get to reach interstellar space while we still had power on the spacecraft to transmit the data back. And that's what Voyager 1 did in 2012, and that's now what Voyager 2 is starting to do in 2018. The sun creates this huge bubble of plasma, ionized material. It goes outward at a million miles per hour and creates a bubble. And inside the bubble, most of the material has come from our sun, and the magnetic field has come from our sun. Outside the bubble, most of the material comes from other stars that exploded 5, 10, 15 million years ago. We have an instrument which measures the wind of coming from the sun, and we saw that, in fact, there was no longer any measurable solar wind. We had left the bubble, basically. The team has been looking forward for this for a long time and really working hard in an engineering sense to make this day happen and to keep the spacecraft with all the instruments on so that they could, all five instruments could sense the heliopause crossing and have data for that. 
What that means is that the Voyager 2 spacecraft is now traveling in interstellar space. Well, this is just contributes to the number of discoveries that Voyager has been making. And this is one we'd hoped we would have the chance to do. And fortunately, the Spose spacecraft were still operating when they reached interstellar space. It's really quite, uh, quite remarkable. And as I said at the beginning of this video, Voyager 2 is thought to be more than 12 billion with a B, miles away from us at this point. It's been traveling for over 46 years, which is nuts. But what is even more nuts is that we are still in contact with it. Now, how we are able to do that is that the Voyager probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which work by converting heat from the decay of radioisotope fuel, in this case, plutonium-238, into electricity. And NASA went the nuclear power route because obviously solar power doesn't work that well when you are trying to fly as far away from the sun as possible. But this fuel source has been decaying over a long time. To conserve power, NASA has shut down the heaters for all of the scientific instruments, which despite that have still continued to operate normally. So we know that the spacecraft are well past their prime and the scientific instruments may only have a few more years. So obviously our time to communicate with Voyager 2 is very, very precious. So then when what happened happened, I can only imagine the vibe in that room. So here's what happened. On July 21st, JPL was getting ready to send out a command to Voyager 2 when they spotted an error in that command. So they corrected it. However, they sent out the original version of that command, the one with the error. And this command actually pointed Voyager 2's probe antenna slightly away from Earth. Suzanne Dodd, the project manager of the Voyager interstellar mission said, it felt awful. It was a moment of panic because we were two degrees off point, which was substantial. So basically one of the only ways we have of getting scientific data about the environment outside of our solar system, and we kind of hung up on it. I think that was not a great day at JPL, but someone had an idea. It was decided to blast a shout command in the probe's direction, telling it to adjust its antenna back towards Earth. And if the signal was strong enough, the craft could still receive it, even though its antenna was slightly offset. So on the morning of August 2nd, NASA sent the highest power signal they could using the high elevation 70 meter transmitter at the communication station in Canberra, Australia. This station is part of NASA's Deep Space Network, which is an international system of giant antennas that are managed by JPL. But because Voyager is so far away, they had to wait 37 hours to see if it would work. The time it would take for their signal to ping the craft and then for Voyager 2 to send a signal that would ping back. So they had to go home, go to bed, wake up, have another full day of work, until on August 3rd at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time, they got a ping back and contact was restored with Voyager 2. And by the way, none of this affected Voyager 1, which is estimated to be traveling slightly farther away at 15 billion miles away. Once both spacecraft run out of power, which is estimated to happen sometime after 2025, both probes will continue to roam through space, still carrying that precious cargo, but to where, we do not know. NASA has a very cool Where Are They Now tab on their Voyager page, which I will post a link to in the description below if you guys want to take a look and just really get a sense of how crazy far away both of these spacecraft are. I'll also put a link to these posters that JPL made for Voyager 1 and 2, which you can download directly from NASA's website, and you guys got to take a look at these things. Some of them are crazy groovy. So that's the tale of how we lost and found Voyager 2. Such a crazy story. Also kind of very relatable. It reminds me of how you like might send the wrong draft of an email to somebody and then they reply and then you're confused and then you're like, oh my gosh, I sent my first draft. Or like, I don't know, when you send an email before you're even done writing it. I just feel like it's something that we've all done before, so I can only imagine the terror of that poor person pressing that button and then being like, no, wait! Terrible. But 
happy ending. Please let me know your thoughts on this Voyager 2 drama, or if you guys remember Voyager 1 or 2 launching. I always like when people comment that they remember seeing an historic launch happening. That's always so amazing to me. Also, maybe I'm just slightly jealous. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, I will see you in the next video.